start. In this video I'm going to show you how to access an IP camera when you've gotten it out of the box and you can't access it right away. Usually this is because your home network is on a different network scheme than what the camera is actually on. In order to find that out, you're first going to, go to, going to go to the Windows button and then type CMD. Then you're going to want to click the command prompt and this is going to bring up the command prompt. The command we're going to type is called ipconfig. And here we can see that our IP address on our computer happens to be a 192.168.2 address and our router happens to be a 192.168.2.1. Now the important part here is the 2 on the third what is called octet. Now since that is different than what we know our camera is set to, we can't access our camera. I'll go ahead and show you that you can't access the camera here. So we know our camera is set to 192.168.1.109 because it, we read the label that's attached to the box. Most of our IP cameras will come with a default address of 192.168.1.109. It could also be 192.168.1.108, but this same process would work regardless of what the IP address is set on your camera. As you can see, I'll click enter here. The router suggests that I'm not connected to the internet and that's why it can't connect to my camera. However, I know it's because it's on a different network scheme. So I'm just going to go ahead and exit back out of the Internet Explorer. I can also exit out of the command prompt because I found out why I was unable to access my camera. It's because I'm on a different network. Now in order to alleviate this, you would come down here to your network icon. Whether or not you have internet access, it will look like this. If you have internet access and you're on a wired connection, it will look like a computer with an ethernet cable. If you're on a Wi-Fi connection, it will look like a Wi-Fi icon. So I'm going to go ahead and right click this. I'm going to click the open network and internet settings button. In here I can see there is an option that says change adapter options. I'm going to click that. It's going to bring up a classic control panel window with the ethernet connection. Now depending on if you are on a laptop or a desktop computer, you may see multiple connections on here. With a laptop computer you could use the Ethernet port on your laptop to directly connect to the camera. However the process is just about the same and then you could also keep your Wi-Fi on to stay on the Internet. In order to change the IP address on my computer to access my camera I'm gonna first right click on my Ethernet connection. I'm gonna click the properties button at the bottom of this list it's going to bring up my connection properties for that Ethernet connection. And the main thing I'm concerned about here is the Internet Protocol version 4. So I'm going to click that. It's going to highlight it. Then I can click the Properties button. Here we can see that by default it's set to automatically obtain an IP address from the router. And the DNS settings we can really forget about. We don't care about those. Just keep in mind when you're done with this process, you will want to come back and in these settings and change this back to automatically. However, I will show you in the video later anyway. But since we're in these settings and we know what IP address scheme that our camera is set to, we can click use the following IP address. Now here's where it can kind of get confusing. You'll want to choose a number between 1 and 254. You likely won't want to choose one just in case there's another device or router on your network that it might conflict with. So in this instance, I always think it's a safe bet to do 192.168.1.50. You can press tab or click down here to the subnet mask. It should automatically fill it. If it doesn't, you're going to want to use the 255, 255, 255, and then zero subnet mask. Finally, you don't necessarily need to set a default gateway, but it's always a good idea to set 192.168.1.1. That way Windows doesn't get confused. You can click the OK button. It's going to save your changes, and then you can click the close button to back out of your Ethernet connection. It might come up with an identifying or a network not connected status or unidentified network status, but that's okay. Now, since we have our Internet set to the 192.168.1 network on our computer, we should be able to access our camera. So again, I'm going to come down to Ether Internet Explorer. And if you don't have Internet Explorer on your taskbar, you can hit the Windows button and then type Internet Explorer and it'll come up in your Windows 10 menu. And then we can click it to open it. If you want to 
pin it to your taskbar, you can simply right click the icon and then click pin to taskbar. But since we care about the camera, we're going to type in the IP address 192.168.1.109. And as you can see, since we set our computer to the same network as our camera, we were able to access our camera this time. So now I'm going to log into the camera using the default username and password. And this is where I can actually set the camera to my main network. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to the top right, click the setting tab. In here, on the left hand side, I can see a bunch of different selections. The second selection or tab is the network tab. So we'll click that. It's going to bring down a bunch of more network options. And really all I am is concerned with the first option, the TCP slash IP section. So I'm going to click that. And in here we can see that the camera is indeed set to 192.168.1.109. Subnet mask is the same. And then our default gateway is 1.1. However, since we know from our command prompt, we know that this is not going to work on our regular network. So we're going to go ahead and set our camera to a 2.109. And then we're going to set our gateway to a 2.1. Again, 192.168.2.109. 192.168.2.1 and again you'll want to first figure out what your network is before you know what to set the camera to so you want to do that IP config or check the status of your connection to find out what that IP address scheme should be and again you want to make sure that no devices on your network have the same IP address because they're, they'll interfere with one another and possibly not work so we've gone ahead and changed this to a 2 and we've changed this to a 2, we'll go ahead and click the Save button. Now if you have a Comcast router or modem, it may be a 10.10.1 network. So as you can see, I'm unable to now access the .2 network because I'm on a .1 network. So just like before, we're going to come into our network control panel settings. If you're unsure how to get back here, we all we did was right click on our network status icon on our system tray, click the Open Network and Internet Settings, and click the Change Adapter Options. So now I'm going to right click on my connection again. I'm going to click the properties button. I'm going to highlight the internet protocol version 4. I'm going to click the properties button. And then I'm going to set this back to obtain an IP address automatically. And again, you don't necessarily have to worry about the DNS settings. It'll do it on its own. So we'll click OK and then close. It's just going to take a couple seconds for this ethernet connection to get back on the router. And as you can see, Internet Explorer automatically detected that I was on the correct network for this camera and was able to reload the page. I can log back into my camera. And here I can see that it pulls up the web interface of my camera. Depending on the camera, you may need to install the plugin to get the video feed going, or you may be able to use it in more modern browsers. It honestly depends on the camera model. And we can go back into the network and TCP IP and we can see that it's set to the 2 network. Now, depending on if you have an NVR or if you're using PC software to record the camera, you could add the camera using this IP address. And again, if you have multiple cameras on your network, you just want to make sure that they have a unique IP address. So for example, if I added another camera, I would want to set it to 192.168.2.110. And it's important if you have multiple cameras that you do this process one by one. Otherwise, you're going to run into some headaches with the devices trying to crosstalk. Hopefully this video helps. Thank you for watching.